In this video, I'm going to show you how I made some custom pennant flags for my friend Mark and Sam's wedding. So let's get started! The first thing I did was grab some plain canvas from the fabric store and cut it down to a manageable size. Then, starting with the short side of the triangle, I found the two outer edges and then the center point. Using my quilter square, I found the long edge of the triangle and then connected all three points. Once you have your triangle drawn, it's time to cut, but you want to give yourself half an inch of seam allowance. So you're going to want to take the line you drew and line it up on the half inch line of your quilter square. That way, when you sew it, the line of stitches is going to fall on the line we drew originally, and that excess fabric is going to fall on the inside of the pendant flag. After I had that first one cut, I just used that same triangle as a template to give myself a second flag in black. Once I had all the pieces cut, it's time to prep them for sewing. So my plan is to take two pieces, sew them down each long side, and then turn it inside out. So we're going to start by pinning both triangles together. But what you want to do is leave the pencil marks on the outside. That way when you sew it and flip it inside out, the pencil marks go on the inside and no one will ever see them. And now it's time to sew. So I basically just left a half inch of seam allowance and ran a straight stitch down each long side of the pendant flag. Just make sure to leave that short side open so you have a way to turn the pendant flag inside out. For the black one, I did end up switching out my bobbin and thread to a darker color, just so when I turned it inside out you wouldn't see any white along the seams. Once I was done sewing and ready to turn it inside out, I made sure to trim off that extra seam allowance right at the point because once you start to turn it inside out, it's going to get too bunchy right there, so you want to just get rid of some of that extra fabric. Turning it inside out is pretty straightforward, but when you get to that top point, it can get a little tricky. So usually I'll use like a chopstick or a pen to kind of poke it out from the inside, but for this I ended up using my Duresta ice pick. If you guys aren't already following Jimmy Duresta on YouTube, you can go ahead and do that over at his YouTube page, and he sells these ice picks on his website. They're a great addition to any shop, and I use mine all the time. Before I started to add detail to the front, I just wanted to give these a quick press to kind of crisp up those seams. And once I had them nice and flat, I did just decide to go around with a top stitch and a contrasting color because I thought it would give it a little bit of detail. For my color scheme, I wanted to use like whites, blacks, and browns, so I went with kind of a contrasting camel color that's going to match the paints that I use later. And then it was time to figure out my design. So I started by drawing a few thumbnails and seeing where it went. Once I came up with something I liked, I just started to kind of lay in some colors just so I'd have a plan for when I started to paint. There are a few different ways you can transfer a sketch to your final product, but for this one I just ended up making a quick mock-up in Photoshop and projecting it onto the wall so I could trace. So I ended up doing a light trace over all the text, but I kind of figured the straight lines and the sun would be easier to just freehand later, so I held off for now. 
And now, we paint! Just kidding, first I am going to put those straight lines in, just so I do have a good foundation to paint on. Okay, and now we paint. But first I am going to do a couple strokes just on a scrap piece of fabric so I can kind of get the feel of it. Once I felt good about my practice run, it was time to get the real thing started. It was a little slow going at first, but I made sure to put on some good TV and I kind of just hung out and painted. To do the sun, I wanted to keep it simple, so I kind of taped off that bottom border and I just used a cup to trace the circle. From there, I kind of guesstimated on the center point of that circle and I drew all of my rays from the sun based on that point. I hate measuring, but if you wanted to be real precise about it, you can measure the distance between each ray, but I just eyeballed it. Sometimes when you're working on a project and you're having a lot of fun, it's hard to know when to stop, but I kind of wanted to call it a day on this and add some grommets. So I ordered a grommet kit on Amazon, which I'll link below, and the first thing you want to do is figure out where you want them to fall and cut a hole. So most kits are actually going to come with a hole punch like this one, but mine wasn't working because I'm literally working on a stump in my front yard, so just make sure to do this on a self-healing mat and you shouldn't have this problem. Okay, so once you have your holes cut, you're gonna take both pieces of your grommet and you're gonna take the top part, which looks like a little top hat, put it on the top, and then the flange piece that goes on the back. You're gonna place that grommet in the like little donut that the kit comes with. Then you're gonna use that second tool to hammer the two pieces together so they kind of crimp around each other. And just like that, you have a totally customizable pennant flag that make a great gift. And hey, congratulations Mark and Sam, we love you guys.